muntjac are the marmite of the British deer species. Some declare they're barely a deer at all, more of a rodent, definitely a pest. Others say they're destroying our woodlands and need to be eradicated. Really? They taste great. Well, someone who's very fond of muntjac is author and journalist Graham Downing. So much so, he's about to launch a new book about munties. Gamekeepers don't like them, farmers don't like them, foresters don't like them, yeah. conservationists don't yeah. like them, yeah. nobody likes them. Uh, but still, there's a secret. <laughs> I want to tell you a secret. I like them. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, think that's I think they're cracking deer. Yeah. I think they're really, really exciting deer to stalk. They're very difficult to stalk. Yeah. They're small. Um, and in conditions like this, when, when the cover's quite high early in the season, they're very hard to spot. Mm. Graham's love of muntjac extends beyond stalking, and the book includes muntjac jewellery and cooking. But more about that later. We want to try and catch up with our own muntjac, so he's invited Roy for a morning stalk around his ground in Suffolk. We've got in here muntjac and fallow. There are a lot of fallow around, or well, there were last time I was here three weeks ago. Right. Unfortunately, I didn't see a buck on that occasion, but I saw lots of does. But if we see a buck uh, and it's shootable uh, and it's safe, then we shoot it. Graham likes to arrive early to let the furry woodland folk settle around him. Unfortunately, we disturb a muntjac buck just inside the wood who tells the whole county that it's got company. As dawn breaks, Roy and Graham get flashes of this feisty animal. However, it's not stupid and gives neither Roy nor Graham a chance. Next up is an indecisive fallow. Then a fox with purpose. Still no muntjac, but there are clearly bucks here as Graham collects their tusks in his special muntjac tin. And if you want to age your buck, here's how. This is a, this is a young buck. You can see that the, the root of the, of the tusk, of the, of, of the tooth, is open. It's going to be like that until between three to five years, and then it starts uh, to close over. Let's find one that's, that's an old one. It's starting to close, there's a good one. At about the age of three to five years, uh, this gap is starting to narrow. And then uh, when it gets to old age, as you can see, uh, the root of the tusk has closed completely, and there's just a little pinhole there probably over five years, more like six or seven years old. That's another old one. Again, the root of the tusk completely closed over. Graham guides us over his ground. We cut through a ride, taking our time. Out on the other side, Roy spots fallow, but there are some much closer. You get the chance. It's like we've walked out in front of the 2.30 at Epsom. The bucks charge across the field. Moments later, more join the charge, and they are stopping for no one. Kick it. We must have walked right past those bucks on the ride, and we weren't very far away from them. They just came out to the edge of the wood, and when they realised their problem, they cleared off. Yeah, they certainly weren't stopping for anyone. They weren't, no. We blame ourselves, but the behaviour would suggest a Fenton moment. Maybe they were being chased. The wood needs to calm down, so we ask Graham about the barking buck we had come across earlier. He stood back in the wood probably about 30 yards, and you could hear him standing and barking. Yeah, so, he was stationary. so he was stationary, but I knew from his barking that although he was alert, he wasn't panicked. Yeah. There was no option really but to move on. No. But what he then did is to come out in front of us to take a look. Take a look and keep checking us. And keep us, checking yeah. us. Yeah, I mean, four, yeah. four or five times he actually came yeah. out. Yeah, he did. He did. And it was a good buck as well. Yeah. It was a nice buck. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's it. You don't, you don't get good by being <laughs> stupid, do you? So. To add to our species list this morning, we see a row with her young, but no shooting opportunities. Back to Muntjac, and Roy wants to know how well the Munties are faring in the UK. The range is steadily increasing. Yes, indeed, the whole of the southeast of England uh, is Munchak country now, and the Midlands, uh, stretching down to the southwest and probably up uh, uh, as far as as far as Yorkshire. Have you heard of uh, any uh, any outbreaks of population up in Scotland yet? There have been rumours, um, and certainly the occasional Munchak has been. 
supposedly seen in Scotland, but I think the, 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 the biggest uh, jump is to Northern Ireland. I mean, they are now established in Northern Ireland, that's for certain, yes. yes. Finally, Graham selects a spot he thinks is suitable for a call. It's all about maximising your chances. Ideally, what we really want is 50, 60 yards back, we want really thick, dense holding cover. Yeah. So that you've got the wind coming from them to you. You've got, they can't go beyond you because that's the edge of the wood yeah. and they don't like going across the wood. You've got a nice, decent backstop. That, that's the scenario that really is the ideal one for, for calling. Although we haven't been able to get onto a muntjac this morning, this is a bronze medal Graham shot a few years ago. He calls it the Valentine's Buck as his wife's perfume pushed it into Graham's path on Valentine's Day, which may explain the necklace made of 80 pairs of muntjac tusks. Oh, every girl should have one. It's a lot of stalking. It's a lot of stalking. It's a lot of <laughs> muntjac. When you think that, uh, you know, an old buck is probably bound to have at least one broken tusk. Um, yeah, it takes a long time to amass that sort of number of particularly the longer ones, they're the difficult ones to get. Muntjac are a great deer and generate lots of business for the UK stalking industry. We just need to make sure they are managed properly, just like all our species, native and alien. We're lucky to have them. Graham is launching his book at the Midland Game Fair 2014. For more information, go to grahamdowning.com.